What's up carp freaks? Welcome to Carp Life and welcome to my Wayne Stones fishery. I've been spending quite a lot of time down here in recent weeks. We do have a, a closed season over the winter period and I've been using that time to carry out all the necessary jobs and maintenance, making it look all tidy for when new anglers start arriving in a couple of weeks. And make sure to stay watching until the end of this video because there's a totally free to enter competition where you could win a session at my Waynestones pool for up to four anglers. But before then, I want to tell you about a session I had over at the Zoo Lake in France. Now, for those of you who watch the challenge, you'll know that I've already been to the Zoo Lake. I went there last winter with Harry when he sprung a challenge on me en route to the lake. I knew nothing about it beforehand. What, what is the actual plan for this week? And what, I don't even know what it is. We're filming it in a, like a... It's a challenge. Road. It was like a road trip. Like, like what we did in Germany last year. No, it's a like, challenge. Challenge? Since when, it, since when has it been a challenge? Luckily, I had a fantastic session and I was very lucky to catch my French, my then French, personal best with a 52 pound mirror. Well, here he is in all his glory. 52 and a half pound, my biggest ever French carp. After that session, I always wanted to go back. I absolutely, I just fell in love with the place. It's an epic venue, around 45 acres in size. This time though, there'd be no pressure of having to catch fish for the cameras or pass the challenge. It was just gonna be a good opportunity to have a social, hopefully catch a few fish and get 2023 up and running in style. Now for my overseas trips, it's a long drive from the northeast of England, so I do like to head over the day before the session itself and stay at a hotel close to the venue, and that's what we did this time. We arrived late that evening in a beautiful little village, just a short drive from the lake. After a 13 hour drive, we've arrived at our hotel. We are about five minutes from the lake in a really nice little french village still got all the christmas decorations up that's unlucky should have come down yesterday really and there's our hotel that we're staying in tonight right i really need a beer and something to eat the next morning we're up early and headed to the local patisserie to get some breakfast before having a stroll around the beautiful little village and finally making the short drive over to the lake. When we got there, the first thing we wanted to do was find some fish and that didn't take long at all. To Jamie's disappointment, however, Tom, the owner, said fishing was not allowed in his koi pond. So instead, we all headed off for a lap around the lake to try and find some proper fish to catch. So after completing a lap of the lake, we decided to go in swims two and three. These swims were close to each other so we could enjoy a social, but they both commanded totally different water. So we weren't gonna be interfering or affecting each other's fishing in any way. The wind was really pushing strongly into these two swims. It was a, a warm breeze pushing in there. It just looked like the fish had to be in the vicinity, but until now we hadn't actually seen any carpy signs at all. So we were kind of going on our gut instinct more than anything else. So with myself in peg two and Jamie in peg three, we set about looking for some, some spots. I found a nice area on the edge of a, of a gravel bar at around a hundred yard range, just so it starts to slope off the bar into the, into the deeper water. That's where I felt the fish would likely be patrolling up and down. So I dropped a, a marker pole on that spot and baited what I thought was fairly heavily at the time with around two or three kilo of, of boilies and pellets. It 
It was around dusk before I finally got all three rods in position. And having seen no signs of fish in this area since we've been there, I was already beginning to have doubts and I was questioning whether I was in the right area or not. Um, thankfully though, that question was answered just a short while later. Well, that is my first carp of the session and my first carp of 2023. He's not a huge fish by the zoo standards. He's probably 24, 25 pounds, something like that. But I was just sat there thinking, am I in the right location? Are the rigs in the right place? Have I put too much bait in? And thankfully that fish has answered all those questions because to get up and running so early on in the session feels absolutely brilliant. Right, let's get him slip back. And hopefully we can get one a little bit bigger. So with this session and 2023 up and running, I had expected to catch more fish that night, but the night remained pretty uneventful. In fact, I had to wait until just after first light before I was able to land the second fish of the session. Well, last night couldn't have got off to a much better start, really. Two fish. I had that mid-20 in the early hours of the morning, and then right on first light, the rod rattles away with this really nice chunky two-tone mirror of 38 pound 13 ounces what an amazing start to the session so having landed a couple of fish myself it was jamie's turn to get amongst them although i never actually saw him land this next fish and i'm pretty sure he stalked this one out of tom's koi pond well it's second fish for me it's not a big one but being as though there's only two ghosts in the lake I'll take that one, absolutely. Stunning looking fish on a miserable day. Definitely brightened it up. Yeah, <laughs> lovely looking fish that, mate. He's awesome. How oh, mega happy when he popped up. <laughs> Who needs big ones when you can catch them like that? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now, although we were on the bank and fishing, we were both technically still at work. And no matter where we are in the world, Jamie and I are both totally committed to our jobs at Capital Competitions. And that Sunday evening, while we were carrying out a live draw, I had a live take. Okay, right, 100 tickets then for the Fox Frontier Camo. One, two, nine, nine. Well done, Good Joshua, and well your Joshua. first win. Well done. Congratulations. Right, one, two, nine, nine. Kicking off. Here there we go. go. Here we go. Oh! oh. 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 That's what an Alex Plus arm sounds like. Where's my head torch? Stuart Herbert took his head torch. The you don't need to. Oh, he's ripped off the part. And went on to land my third fish of the session. Well, we're just in the middle of doing the Capital Competitions Sunday night live draw. When I had a single beep on my right hand rod, which turned into a really slow take and then this feather came along but at 30 pound six ounces it's a very welcome interruption We've got a really beautiful chestnut colored common thought like an absolute demon as well i thought it was a lot bigger at first when i when i first got to the rod but yeah it's a fantastic looking fish and my third fish of the session now so yeah things seem to be going pretty good having had that 30 pound common so early on that evening i had expected more fish to follow that night but that wasn't the case at all i awoke at dawn the next day having had no activity whatsoever in the night hadn't really seen any fish in the area and now we were three days into this session and i did feel as though I should be really building momentum by now, but that wasn't the case at all. Um, I just felt as though I was just nicking the odd bite here and there, and I wasn't really building on anything. I'd caught three fish, biggest one, 38 pounds. Jamie had had two fish, both of those were doubles. And although I was happy obviously to catch a nice 38 pounder, it's certainly not a huge fish by, by this lake standards. And I didn't feel like I was exactly setting the world alight. 
Now, for that reason, I felt as though if I was to turn this session around from being a good session to a remarkable session, then I needed a change and I needed to do it quick. For that reason, we decided to up sticks and move swims. So, Jamie and I packed everything away in the van and we headed round to swims 17 and 18. This is kind of on a, on, on a bit of a point. And again, the swims are close by, but they cover totally different water. So again, we wouldn't be sort of interfering with each other's fishing. Now, I decided to really go for it. The fish in the zoo, they are greedy fish. I found a nice spot at around 160, 165 yards range. Um, I cast a marker float out there, um, felt a nice area of gravel, um, just that it dropped into a little bit of deeper water. Similar sort of scenario to where I had been fishing, but it was more focused in the, towards the middle of the lake. I think in the winter months, on a lot of venues, the fish do seem to sort of head out into the, 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 the middle section of the lake, especially on, on large venues. I don't know why, but you do find on a lot of big venues, the fish do sort of hold up in the middle section of the lake. So I had this middle section of the water covered, um, as it dropped off from a bar, I felt like it was a good area to concentrate on. And for that reason, I went out in the, the boat and deposited a whole bucket of bait over the top, spread it all around. In total, it was probably around 15 kilo of bait. Now, I know that sounds excessive, especially in January but I know Tom, the owner, I know he, he does feed the fish over the winter months. And over the winter, anglers had been enjoying good results by fishing over large beds of bait. So I'd be crazy to ignore tactics that I knew to be working. So once again, I baited heavily and put all three rods on that spot. And after doing so, I kind of sat back and thought, that seems a lot of bait. I know it works, but that, that just seemed like a lot of bait. Anyway, Tom, the owner, came round and we were just about to have something to eat and I was telling Tom how much bait I put in and he said, yeah, it, it is quite a lot, but they will get on it at some point. And with that, this happened. Well, I was just saying to Tom, who's actually behind the camera now, <laughs> I think I put too much bait in. I think I've gone way over the top with this one. Put in one of those big white buckets, absolutely full of pellet, boily, and maize. And I thought, why have I done that? Why, why, why did I put so much in? I think even you, Tom, said, hmm, I take them, I take them a bit longer <laughs> to get on that. This rod's been out, I think two hours. So yeah, not bad after, after moving swims in the rain. If we land this, it will already have paid off, I think. Big, big old back Here he on comes. him. Here he comes. Yeah. Hey. Nice. Move paid off then, huh? For you. <laughs> there he is. We've got a really a stunning looking. 28 pound mirror. It's got these gorgeous little pin scales all over both flanks. An incredible looking car. And already it looks like the move has paid off. In total, the rods had only been in the water a couple of hours. And to get a fish so quickly had already justified the move. And I was confident I was able to, to build on something now. And I was sure more fish would follow that night, but they didn't. That was it. After putting in all that bait, getting a bite so quickly, it just didn't make sense. Um, I almost wondered whether a group of fish had come in and literally cleaned everything out. But just before dawn broke, Jamie got into his first decent fish of the session. Well, I'm absolutely buzzing with this one. 45 pounds, seven ounce, first light bite. Oh, new, new spot that I found yesterday. 
got some bait on it and this absolute brew has ripped off this morning. Look at him. Proper chunk. When I woke up this morning, I saw that retainer bobbing in my swim. I thought, I don't, I don't even remember <laughs> catching that, but, but well done me. But no, awesome, windy, mate. my swim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You went for the shelter, but. <laughs> no, that's awesome, mate. Yeah. Hard worked, that fish. Definitely. Finding that new spot and uh, paid off for you. Buzzing, absolutely. Buzzing. So after catching that fish really early, I was so surprised that nothing else followed, especially after putting in such a large amount of bait. But I did have the feeling that a group of fish had come in and literally cleaned me out and I'd been able to luckily pick off a fish before they did so. So for the next night, I decided to really go for it and really crank up the bait. It, it kind of was a uh, or bust tactics. Can you say shit or bust? Yeah, yeah I'm going to say that. It, I, was, I was going for it. And again, like I said previously, I didn't just want to have a, a good session. I wanted to come away with a remarkable session. I'd, I'd caught fish every night. I'd got a few fish under my belt, but I think it's maybe it's because I've come from a, a match fishing background. I'm always striving for something more, something better. I'm never satisfied. If I caught 10 fish in a session, I'd always think, how could I have caught 11? I'm always wanting more. And it, it can be kind of hard to assess what is considered a good session and what is remarkable. For me to turn this session around from being a good session to being a great session, I felt like I needed to do something drastic. And for that reason, I decided to absolutely fill the granny out of it, I think is what they say. I'm not even gonna say how much bait I put in. It doesn't matter. This isn't a my dick's bigger than your dick contest. I mean, it is, but you don't need to know that. But the thing, I can't say that. I can't say that. I can't say that. I just can't say that. Put that in the outtakes, maybe, I think, yeah. I don't even want to say how much bait I put in. I, I don't know. It was, it was a lot. It got to the point where I thought, this is excessive. Let's put some more in. <laughs> yeah, and it worked. It worked a treat, I have to say, because that night I went on to land four fish. And now I felt like things were moving in the right direction. Well, tea time seems to be bite time. We're just about to have a lasagna, actually. And uh, before I could take the first bite, Rod rattles off. And we've got this. The night kicked off with a pretty little 12 pound linear, not a big fish, but again, that bite came so quickly after putting in such a large quantity of bait. But he looks pretty awesome, doesn't he? Look at that for a zip linear. Wicked fish, that one. <laughs> I'm guessing this is one of the, the new stockies that Tom put in quite recently. Greedy little fella, because that was caught over a lot of bait. Right, let's slip him back. This was followed shortly after by a 22 pounder. Well, I just climbed in my sleeping bag for the night and one of the bobbins pulled up tight and here we've got fish number six. He's not a big one by the zoo's standards. He's probably about 22, 23 pounds, something like that. I've just unhooked him in the net. I'm gonna slip him straight back and get the rod back out there and try for a bigger one. Oh, you wanna go, don't you? Right. After every fish, I went back out in the boat to, to drop the rod on the pole, followed by a big bucket of bait over the top. It was hard work because it was blowing a gale. It chucked it down all night, but with so many big fish there, I just felt like if I kept going, kept working at it, the rewards would come, and they did. I'll take a look at that. We've got an absolute tank. Oh, it's just before first light, it's raining, I'm absolutely soaked to the skin. But it doesn't matter at all. After all them small fish, to finally get amongst one of the big ones, 
it just makes it all the more rewarding. I'm absolutely buzzing right now. Right, I'm gonna put him in the retainer for a short while, then we'll take a look at him when it gets light. Just take a look at that, 48 pound, 14 ounces. I'm absolutely buzzing. After all the frustration of catching the smaller fish and questioning whether I was in the right location, it's all finally paid off. Absolute breeze block of a fish. Oh yes. Although this fish did come about after a change of tactics. I did say last night, I was questioning whether something wasn't quite right, whether it was location or tactics. Yeah, a change. A change of tactics has paid off big style here. <laughs> I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Oh, yes. Well, it was just literally a few minutes after landing that 48 pounder when one of the other rods rattled off with this. 43 pound, exactly. Another chunky, really solid mirror. Look at the colours on it as well. Nice dark chestnut coloration. Absolutely made up of that. Two January 40s, just minutes apart. <laughs> now, just before I had that brace of 40s, I did change the baiting tactics slightly. Although I was catching, I, I still wasn't catching the bigger fish. So I decided to ditch the pellets and particles and go for an all out boilie approach. Well, I mentioned earlier that I made a slight tactical change. Up until now, I've been baiting heavily with a mixture of pellets, particles and boilies. But after catching a number of small fish, I decided to make the switch to just boilies. So I've been baiting with some live system. Here I've got some dumbbells. I've been using dumbbells and 15 mil boilies. So I've been pouring them in the bucket and I've been mixing them 50-50 with the new test bait. It's not called Mark, that's just my name on the bag. Um, so yeah, the, the two baits complement each other really, really well. You've got the nice creaminess of the live system combined with this creamy, savoury, spicy, meaty new test bait. They just seem to work together absolutely perfectly. And yeah, it's already brought about a pretty good result. Now, directly behind the swim where Jamie and I were fishing, we had a log store, like barn, where we were able to get beneath and shelter from the, the cold and the rain. And that's where we're having our meals and doing our cooking and, and sort of socialising. And I do think in the winter months, if you're able to, to be comfortable, I do think you can fish more efficiently. Well, directly behind the swims, we are fishing here, peg 17 and 18. We've got a log storage lean-to that we've made into our extended living quarters. I'm gonna give you a guided tour. Here we see Jamie in the kitchen diner. What's cooking? It is jambon le fromage. Oh la la, très bon. So yeah, that's the kitchen diner, the seating area there. Over here we have the bar. As you can see, with a fine array of alcoholic beverages. If we come over here, we have the pantry, where we have a variety of different spices. We have hot chili powder and crushed chilies. Also got salt there, some oil, an oven. It's a bit messy over here though, that needs, that needs a bit of a tidy. What else do we have? Oh, of course, we have the photographic area behind the behind that. We've got the the carpy log pile for ultimate carpy photographs. And if we do a spin, there's our bivvies. That's where we're fishing. See, it's been really cozy, really comfy. Sat under here during the days, keeping warm, keeping dry and keep him well fed. 
Now for myself and Jamie, very little action had actually came during daylight hours. A few bites just on first light, but by far the most productive time seemed to be tea time. I'm not sure if it coincided with the fresh introduction of bait that had just gone in ready for the night ahead, or whether it was just simply a known feeding spell. Either way, when tea time came, so did the next carp. Always the case when you're eating. End up getting a run. There we go. Well, it does seem to be a magic time around seven o'clock, just when we're about to have our tea. And uh, when the rods rattled off, and I had to uh, get afloat to free it of something. I don't know if it went round a, a boulder on the bar or in a weed bed. I had to take to the boat. As soon as I got above it, it popped up. And we got it in the net. So let's have a look at it. And here we are. We've got a long, lean, angry male 31 pound mirror. And it's only been two and a half hours since I Got the rods in position, spread a bucket full of boilies all over them. I've already got a fish on the bank. These fish are just absolute pigs. They just home in on that bait and start troughing. And it really does seem as though the more bait you put in, the more fish you catch. Crazy for January. No sooner had I climbed into my sleeping bag when I had another take. And this time, as soon as I picked up the rod, I knew this fish was much bigger than anything I'd caught so far. Well, it's been about an hour since I slipped back that 31 pounder and the exact same rod is away again. It's strange really when you're fishing three rods on a spot, it does seem to be that even though you're fishing in a, a quite a tight area, one or two rods seem to be the most productive. Like last night I had four fish, two on the left hand rod, two on the right hand rod, and the middle rod didn't produce. And so far tonight, two bites, both on the same rod. You'd think each rod had like a, an equal chance of, of doing a bite. Or perhaps it's just look at the draw, I don't know. Still a bad fish. The fight was really slow and dogged and seemed to go on forever. But finally, the fish surfaced and slid into the net First time of asking. Bush! <laughs> uh, let's not put that in. That's going in. <laughs> Here he comes, get in that net, get in that net, get in that net. Finally, the fish surfaced, and I was able to slide the net under a very special carp indeed. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, look at that. That'll do. Look at that. Oh, what an awesome fish. I put up a proper battle. Oh, right. Let's have a look at this one. Let's see what we've got here. I think it's up there. I think it's close. That is close. <laughs> we got, can you see that? 50 pound dead. 50 pound, exactly. That'll do. <laughs> 50 pound, exactly. Oh. What a fish it is too. 
absolutely stunning. Well, that has got to be one of the coolest carp I have caught in a very long time. Just the unique scaling of it, all those little scales, a bit like, a bit like crazy paving on it. Such a long, powerful fish. You can see why it fought so hard. What an impressive creature that is. And at 50 pound exactly, it's a chunk as well. I am absolutely blown away with that. <laughs> what an amazing place and what an amazing session this is turning out to be. Just look at that for a carp. What an absolutely amazing creature that is. Oh, you get a kiss as well. There you go. Right. Let's put it back. Him back. Oh, yes! I forgot to spray him back. Spray on your back! There you go. Always spray on the back. When you finish. That night, Jamie was also able to land this chunk, which was his biggest fish of the session so far. Well, after a frustrating couple of days, this one certainly cheered me up. 43 pound. Let's get him back. Now, because I'm fishing at quite long range on this session, there's a few things I'd like to talk about that I think should be given careful consideration when fishing at distance. And the most important of all for me is bite indication. Now, because monofilament line has quite a lot of stretch, the further we are fishing, the greater the distance, the more stretch there is in the line and the more bite indication can be compromised. So for that reason, the first thing I'm doing is fishing with a really tight line going down to the rig. I can't really pull that line any tighter without risking moving the lead. And I'm fishing with a five ounce gripper style lead. I've also got here a heavy dumpy bobbin with the brass weight inside, just to ensure extra weight, extra resistance, and it maintains tension in the line. I've got the Fox RX Plus set to the maximum sensitivity setting. That way, as soon as the fish moves the rig, moves the lead, then a bite should be registered. Out there, there's quite a few weed beds, quite a few gravel bars and humps and bumps. As soon as that fish picks up the rig, I wanna know about it. I don't wanna risk losing the fish because the fish has gone into a weed bed before I've even known about a bite or it's managed to go over a bar and the lines become lodged on something. So as soon as that fish picks up the hook bait and moves, I will know about it. Bites though, at this sort of range, are quite finicky. You're not gonna get screaming takes. Although I'm fishing with a really, really tight line and a nice tight clutch, bites are often just one or two beeps. You're not gonna be getting liners, you're not gonna be getting false indications. When you get a beep by fishing with such a tight line at that sort of range, a beep, it's often a bite. Also, one another point uh, I like to make, I do see a lot of people fishing with really slack clutches and when they get a take, they get absolute screaming takes. I don't think I've had a screaming take since the 90s. For me, I don't want to be getting screaming takes. That's a fish that's just wildly out of control. When I get to the rod, I want to be in control. I don't want the fish to be in control. So I always set my clutch to playing tension. That way, if a fish is taking line, if it is managing to take line, or it's pulling against the tension of, of the spool, that's just helping that hook hold, helping that hook go in further and further. If the fish is able to run freely with a slack clutch, it can, it can run around, there's very little pressure, very little tension on the actual hook hold. I want that fish, if it is trying to run, it's just helping that hook go in even further. And when I pick up the rod, I'm not having to tighten anything, wind anything to disengage a bait runner. It's literally just a case of picking up the rod and you're on playing tension and you're able to play the fish immediately. And straight away, you're the one in control, not the fish.
Well, we're about to go into the final night of the session now. Uh, no more action has come for me since about, I think it's about 10 o'clock last night. We had two fish in fairly quick succession and then nothing. Uh, but I haven't touched the rods. They, I'm absolutely fine with where they are. Didn't see any need to reposition them. But I do feel like I need to get some more bait in the swim, which is quite difficult right now because I really am down to the dregs of, of what bait that we, we brought with us. I never expected to be using these sort of quantities of bait in January. It's, it's, it's crazy the amount of bait that we've used. But yeah, I've got a, a few kilos of boilies left. I'm just about to go in the boat and spread them around the pole over the spot. And I just hope it's enough to entice one more big one before it's time to call it a day. going into the final night of this session, there just seemed to be something about the final night on a, on a, on a big session where it just seemed to have a different, a different atmosphere, a different vibe to all the other nights. I don't know what it is. You just have that feeling that something magical is gonna happen. Like you're almost, you almost owed it. Like it's your final night. You're gonna catch something big. Of course, it's my last night here. It just, I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But both Jamie and I, on that final night, just had that feeling that something special was going to happen. And when my alarm sounded first, I was hoping it was going to be me. It wasn't, but I was still really, really pleased to be sliding the net under this beautiful mid-20. There's the rig and hook bait that's accounted for all my fish on this session. 11 fish hooked, 11 fish landed. I'll show you that rig in the morning when it gets light, but basically it's a, a spinner rig with a washed out pink carp freaks pop-up. I'm not gonna take this fish out of the water. There's no need to really, we can have a look at him here. I just lift him out. Hopefully he'll behave. Are you gonna behave? You put up a good fight, you should be tired. Come on, have a look at you. There we go, always heavier than I thought actually. Got a lovely clean mirror of around, I reckon 24, 25 pound, that one. Put up a proper battle. Yeah, lovely clean fish that. Now after slipping that fish back, I climbed back into my sleeping bag and I must have fell into a really deep sleep because the next thing I remember was Jamie waking me up and he was hyperventilating. I thought, he's either had another nightmare and needs a cuddle, or he's got an absolute tank. Look at the size of that, mate. Jesus. When I went over and peered in his landing net, he landed an absolute unit. Oh, come on. In. Yep. This was a really big fish. And I think we both looked at each other and wondered whether it was the big one. So having been lucky enough to catch a really big fish myself on the, the previous French trip, I know exactly what Jamie was feeling at this moment. And I really was feeding on his, his, his buzz and his adrenaline right now. And we got all the, the, the weighing equipment ready, the camera gear ready. We wet the sling and zeroed the scales. And now was the moment of truth. I think it's yeah. your PB, are you? You reckon 63 was? Yeah, I reckon it's your PB. <laughs> <laughs> Can we see that? Focus. It doesn't like. Oh, there we go. We can see that, I think. 65, 12. Look at that. Get bigger. <laughs> 65 pound, 13 ounces. I mean, that is a proper hipper pot of chunk. We immediately sent the photos and a little video uh, to Tom, the owner, who was actually fishing at the other end of the lake. And we did think it might have been the big one, the biggest one in the lake. Uh, but he messaged back and said it's a fish called the silverback, which is the second biggest. But it doesn't matter, first biggest, second biggest, it's an absolute beast of a fish. 
Look at that. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. New PB. What a fish. <sighs> 6513. <laughs> well, we just sent the pictures over to Tom, the lake owner. He's confirmed this is the second biggest fish in the lake. A fish known as silverback at £65.13. Absolutely buzzing. Made the week. Absolutely. Oh, lost words. I'm buzzing for you, mate. Lost I really am. Words. It reminds me, I don't know, it looks very much like, a, well, if it was two-toned, it would remind me of, remind me of the Collingbrook two-toned. I think it's like the shape of its yeah, tail. Yeah. I don't know, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. I'm just looking at the shape of its tail and the head. What Either do you way. think? Either, Either way, it's a beast. beast. <laughs> I'm a slipping back. Okay. <laughs> Let's get him back. I think he deserves a kiss, doesn't it? Go on then. Look at that. What does he say? Get some spray on your back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh. oh, I just can't wait for the PB bucket in the morning. That's, That's going to be good. mega. <laughs> mega. Can't wait for that to happen. <laughs> When I woke up the next morning, I was still I was still buzzing from Jamie's capture, to be honest with you. Seeing him catch a, a new PB and an absolute, it was an absolute beast of a fish as well. It's, it was just such a solid unit. But the carp gods would also bless me with one more fish before it was time to hit the road. Well, what a way to say goodbye. We've got a lovely, plump 38 pound common on the final morning of the trip. And this really has been a January session to remember. We've had 20 fish between us, topped off with Jamie's monster of over 65 pound. Absolutely amazing fishing for January. Amazing fishing for any time of year. But yeah, this is a winter session I'll never forget. Although it was almost 30 pounds smaller than the last fish I'd seen, Jamie's fish, it didn't matter because that fish was absolutely immaculate. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that's one of the best looking commons I'd caught since the last time I caught a big common. And the, the big long one, yeah. <laughs> Forget about if I hadn't caught that one, this would have been the nicest common I'd caught in a long time. Right, let's slip this fella back because it's almost time to hit the road. Before we do that, there's just one more thing we have to do. No, we don't. <laughs> I don't want to get my feet wet. Oh, here we go. Standard procedure. Come on. You're going to get wet. There you go. Woo! There we go. You might as well go in now. I'm not going in. And just come this way a little bit. Just I think like... to finish it off with a little zoo bomb would just, just add to it, really. Yeah, come, Tattoo. He's got... Go a little bit that way. No, I'm just can't a tiny, get me to too wet. Just a tiny bit that way. Under strict instructions. This is a man that plays ice hockey. Go back a tiny bit. I'm not trying Look to get you wet, wet. Right. So. So yeah, Jamie smashed his PB last night with a 65-13 mirror. There's only one thing for it now, isn't there? You ready? No. Any, any last words? Anything like that? Yes, right. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> Good job, well done, mate. I'd rather that I get PB and mate, to be fair. Oh, well done, mate. Took it well. Took it like a champ there, mate. Cheers. Well done. Give me that one. Well done, well done. Well, that was an absolutely incredible week at the zoo. And you can see now why it is one of my favorite French venues. 
I absolutely love the place. I love the lake, I love the stock of the fish, and I love the style of fishing. It seems crazy to use that sort of quantity of bait in January. It just seemed as though the more bait you put in, the more fish you caught. And when you think back home in England at that time of year, it will have been scratching time, scratching around with, with solid bags or, or zigs or setting little traps. But to go somewhere and, and fish in a really positive manner and get a positive result, I just love that. And that is why it is one of my favorite venues. I just want to say a massive thank you to Tom and Maureen at the zoo for their fantastic hospitality while we were there. This really is an incredible venue. I'm going to put a link to it in the video description below because if you're looking for a venue in France, you should really check this place out. Now I mentioned before that I've been doing lots of work at my Waynestones fishery. We do have a semi-closed season in operation over the, the winter months where we have reduced numbers of people on and this does allow me to carry out work without disturbing other anglers. Um, there's still lots of things to do and not much time but we've still got a few weeks before anglers will once again be out on the banks but recently we have introduced some more fish into both wood pole and in the main Waynestones pole. So hopefully that will liven things up for anglers visiting us in the spring. As well as that, it's mainly been general maintenance, repairing the paths and the swims and making sure everything looks tidy for when the new anglers arrive. Now we do still have dates available this year on both Wood Pool, which is a small pool here, or on the main Waynestones pool. So how we actually operate is that both pools are available for exclusive full lake bookings. So Wood Pool is available for two people to hire the whole lake, either midweek or weekends. And Waynestones pool is available for four people exclusive use. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then drop me a message over on my Facebook page or Instagram page. Now, as well as my work here at the fishery and with my, my fishing, I also have work to do with capital competitions. And that could be anything from having meetings to discuss new competitions, new prizes and ideas moving forward. Or it can be out doing photos and videos for new exciting prizes we have going on, which can be anything from rods and reels right through to vans. Recently, we had an incredible looking VWT6 Sportline, an amazing looking machine. But by the time you see this, there'll be a new van on. So be sure to go over to the Capital Competitions website to see what you could win. Well, in the last episode of Carp Life, I said there was a new addition to the Pitcher's household because Judith and I were getting a puppy and we've got him and he's a little belter. I actually got him the day before uh, I headed off to the zoo. Um, so I didn't get to spend much time with him on that first week, but I want to introduce you to him now. By the way, I did say last time that I got to name him. So... I don't think it's a name anyone will guess, but yeah, I got to pick the name. I'm gonna go and get him. Hopefully he's not camera shy. 
Hello, mate. Do you want to come out? Oh, careful. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Wiggly. There we go. There he is. Here we go. Here we go. Who's that funny man? Look at him. You know him. Who's that? Here he is. There he is. Hello, mate. What's up? What's the matter? You're not camera shy. You want to go and see Jack? Go and see Jack. Go on then. There you go. <laughs> well, there he is. The latest addition to the pictures household. Do you want to go down? No? Well, the deal was we could have a puppy if I got to name him. But Mrs. Pictures said she wanted a German name. So the first German name that came to my mind was inspired by the 1988 Christmas classic movie, Die Hard, the villain that took over the Nakatomi Plaza. That was the first German name that came to my mind. And that's why he's called Hans Gruber. Hans Gruber. Yeah, that's you, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but he's a cool little carp dog. You love it, don't you? You love being out, you love it in the van. We need to get you some carpy dog attire though, don't we? We need to get you some carpy clothing. Does anyone do carpy dog clothes? Yeah. They do? Well, that's what we need to get you. You need to have a little a little DPM jacket on or something, don't, don't you? Carpy you up a bit. Yeah? What's that? You need to stop being scared of ducks and pheasants and pigeons though. They're terrifying. Owls sh** himself when he hears an owl. <laughs> don't you? You don't like owls, do you? No, nope, you don't like owls. They're scary, aren't they? I know, they are scary. So you'll be seeing a lot more of Hans Gruber in future episodes of Carp Life. So until then, stay carpy and I'll see you next time. Throw you in. Do you want me to throw you in? Do you want me to throw you in? I'll throw you in. I'll throw you in. Come here, let me throw you in. Come here, let me throw you in. Come here. Come here, let me throw you in. Come here. Is this? Is this? I'll throw you in. Oh, don't be such a baby. Me, me. Come here. There you go. You love it when I throw you up in the air, don't you? You're such a baby, aren't you? <laughs> don't be all barky and growly when I pick you up and start yelping like a baby. You're such a baby, aren't you? Aren't you a little baby? You're such a baby, aren't you? Hmm? Aren't you? Is that it? Hmm? Is that it, little baby? It's competition time and you could win a session for up to four people, or you can come completely on your own, to my Wayne Stones pool behind me. You can choose either a midweek session or a weekend, whenever's good for you. And all you have to do are three very simple things. First of all, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Secondly, follow the Capital Carp Competition's Facebook page because that is where the live draw takes place. And thirdly, let me know in the comments section below the name of the lake I went to in France. So subscribe to my channel, follow the Capital Carp Competition's Facebook page, put the answer in the comments section below and good luck. All right, okay, here we go. So it all looks ship shape and fancy for ship shape and fancy? No pressure, just. Where am I going? <laughs> no pre no. And that sounded. Where am I going? It was just going to be a great time to have. Uh, no, that doesn't make sense, does it? Why does it not sound right in my head? Is it something not right with me today? Finally, drive making this hell before having a stroll around the beautiful little village and making the. Why can't I say it? We're having a walk on the beautiful little village. We headed off to the local village place. The next morning we, oh, I can't even do it. Next morning we, walk, we, we, we went to the patisserie to get some croissants. Hurts my throat. Doesn't sound right now. 
Okay, I've got it, okay. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. The next morning, we're up early and headed to the local patisserie to get some breakfast before having a stroll. <laughs> I'll stroll around the village, get some breakfast before having a short And Why do I keep saying short stroll? The next morning, we're up early and we headed to the local patisserie. <laughs> I keep going to say village. Right, this time, I'll just it off. That's my motto. But they both command totally different water, so we wouldn't be interfering with each other. That sounds rude. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he stalked this one from Toy, Toys Koi Pond. This is the one. That sounded bad, didn't it? We both still had. But better, but not ideal. So I was buzzing, setting the world alight. So I've lost my voice. That's to be fair, that was a good cut. <laughs> I can use a cut away the fish. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. I, I do think if you're. What was that? Did he? Took one step off and missed. It's taking forever. Here we go again. So I'll do a brew. This is the one. Brew, look to camera, talk. That's the one. <clears> that was a thick bit of bottle. The move is all f***ing hell. The move had also paid off for Jamie because he too was all hell, which was his big. That makes sense. So Cindy's like a tutorial, then like so Cindy's like a tutorial, then like was talking shit. That's what that's what it sounds in my head when I'm saying that. <laughs> Bigger than anything else. Anything else. This service and slid in the net. <laughs> Can I do that? It was a different type of fish. One was long and black. This one was dumpy and pristine. Doesn't really, that's not working. <laughs> it's not working. It doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. They were both nice fish is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I know what you're trying to go Marine for their fantastic hot, hot. <laughs> so the question is, did the waterproof coat work? No, soaking all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> Running down the chest. Yeah. What are you doing, Jamie? Just help me that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just help me that. What's happening? Just What's not, happening? None of your business. What's happening? Why is there a boat drifting across the lake with no one in it? Jamie, did you forget to tie up the boat? Did you? No. No? Didn't think so. But that just shows the, the stocker fish and the stamper fish that they are just, just greedy. <laughs> or it can be out as a noisy cow. <laughs> Shut up. It is as well. Okay. Gruber. That's Gruber. That's Gruber. What's this? What's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, the fish doesn't like it. Oh, isn't it lovely? <laughs> so, get subscribing, get following, get commenting. <laughs> so, get subscribing, get following, get commenting. So, subscribe to my channel. Oh, you can put that in the outtakes, but I don't think I need to. Oh, you've got something there anyway, I think. Okay.